Here we're going to look at two problems that come from the 2012 Czech Polish Slovak Junior Math Olympiad. And before we get started with these problems, I want to give a shout out to my friend whose family is from Poland, Chris Sadowski. We've, we've written a couple of math papers together. I don't really know anyone personally from Czech Republic or Slovakia, but there is a rock climber who's widely considered to be the strongest rock climber in the world right now named Adam Andra from Czech Republic. And then obviously there's this super famous YouTuber named David Dobrik from Slovakia. So if somehow this video gets in front of your eyes, I'd like to do some sort of super weird crossover with really anyone. Okay, so let's look at this first problem. Let's determine all primes A, B, and C such that A squared plus AB plus B squared equals C squared plus three. Now, since we're supposed to solve this over just the prime numbers, not all integers or all natural numbers, it stands to reason that there's probably only one or two solutions. And that's because there's no like generating formula for prime numbers, so there'd be really no way to write down an infinite family of solutions. Okay, another thing that we want to keep in mind is that 2 is the only even prime number. And so 2 plays like a special role when it comes to prime numbers, so perhaps the only solution that we can get out of this is for one of them to be equal to 2. Well, let's maybe prove that not all of them can be odd, just to show that one of them has to be the number two in the first place. So let's maybe start off by supposing that A, B, and C are all odd. But now notice that that means that A squared plus A, B plus B squared is odd. So that's pretty clear because A squared is odd, A, B will be odd, and B squared will be odd. So we have odd plus odd plus odd. That gives us an odd number. But C squared plus three is even. That's because we have an odd number plus an odd number. That clearly gives us an even number. So this gives us a contradiction. So what did we contradict? We contradicted this assumption up here that they were all odd. But that means that one of them has to be even. Well, at least one of them has to be even. But again, like I said before, the only even prime number is the number two. So that tells us that one of them at least is the number two. So let's just go through this one case at a time. So our first case will be if A is the number two. So let's see what we get for that. So plugging a equal to two in here, we'll get four plus two b plus b squared equals c squared plus three. Next, we can maybe subtract three from both sides of this equation. That's gonna give us b squared plus two b plus one equals c squared. But luckily enough, now this left-hand side easily factors as a binomial squared. This is b plus one quantity squared. But now since we're working over prime numbers and prime numbers are a subset of natural numbers, that tells us that b plus one must be equal to c. So let's see what that means. That means b and c are two primes that are only one number from each other. But there's only one example of primes that are separated by just one, and that is the number two and the number three. So what we can take out of this is that b is two and that c is three. So that gives us our first solution. A is two, B is two, and C is three. But there's a pretty clear symmetric solution that comes alongside this, and that would be the solution where if we started off by assuming that B was equal to two, and we would do a very, very similar calculation, and we would end up finding that A had to be equal to two and C had to be equal to three. So now let's jump into the second case. So case number two, will be that A is, well, bigger than two, B is bigger than two, so that means that A and B are bigger than or equal to three, but then they can't all be odd by our first assumption that we had up here, or I shouldn't say assumption, by our first ob observation we had up here, so that means we could have C is equal to two. But now let's compare each side of this equation. Notice that if A and B are bigger than or equal to three, 
then that means that a squared plus ab plus b squared is bigger than or equal to 27, because we have nine plus nine plus nine, but 27 is most definitely bigger than two squared plus three, which is equal to seven, which is c squared plus three. So check it out, we've got our left-hand side of our equation is strictly greater than the right-hand side of our equation. But that tells us that there is no solution for this second case when C is the even prime. Okay, so we've only got one real solution to this equation, and that is A and B are both two and C is equal to three. Okay, let's get rid of this and we'll look at the second problem. So we just worked through this first problem and we found that the only solution was A equals B equals two and C equals three. Now we're ready to look at this second problem. And that says that if N is a natural number, then the quantity two times N squared plus one minus N is not a perfect square. So I think this is a pretty interesting problem because a lot of times you'll be asked to show something is a perfect square, but not very often are you asked to show that something is not a perfect square. Okay, so let's maybe jump into this. Notice that this is equivalent to solving the following equation. Two times N squared plus one minus N equals M squared, where M and N are natural numbers. So if we can solve this equation, then, well, then we have a case where this is a perfect square. So I'll get myself started by expanding and rearranging the left-hand side of this goal equation. That'll leave me with two N squared minus N plus two equals M squared. Next, I'll look at this left-hand side and maybe think about completing the square on the left so that maybe we can apply some results that are well known among perfect squares. Okay, so let's see maybe how we can do this the most clean way. So I'm gonna write this as two times n squared minus one half n. Then I'll leave a little gap to add something to complete the square. And then I have plus two here equals m squared. I've left another little gap here for my correction term. Next, I need to figure out what I need to add here so that I create a perfect square binomial. The standard rule is you take half of the coefficient of the linear term and you square it. So half of half is a quarter, squared is a 16th, so that means we're gonna add 1 16th here. That makes this a perfect square binomial. But we didn't really just add 1 16th, we added two times 1 16th. So to counteract that, we need to subtract 1 8th, in other words, two times 1 16th from the outside of those parentheses. Next up, we'll notice that two is equal to 16 over eight, so we can make a nice simplification there. But now we can rewrite the left-hand side. So we have two times n minus one quarter squared. This is gonna become 15 over eight equals m squared. But we've gone outside of the integers here because we've got denominators and stuff. So we'd like to rescale this equation so that it's an integer equation again. And we can do that by taking the entire equation and multiplying by eight. So I'll just write it like that. That means I'm multiplying this entire equation by eight. So that's gonna leave me with 16 times n minus one quarter squared plus 15 equals eight times m squared. Next, I can just recall that 16 is the same thing as four squared, which allows me to bring it inside that square binomial pretty easily. Now I've got an equation that looks like four n minus one squared plus 15 equals eight m squared. I'm actually gonna take this eight m squared and bring a two squared inside of it and write this as two times two m quantity squared. Notice that clearly gives us eight m squared. Now I'm gonna perform a change of variables just so that we have some things that are a little bit easy to work with. Notice finding a solution to this will be equivalent to finding a solution to the following equation after these substitutions have been made. So I'm gonna set a equal to four n minus one and b equal to 2m. This equation that we started with 
turns into an equation that's a little bit easier to work with that looks like a squared plus 15 equals two times b squared. So if we can solve this equation over the integers in a way that corresponds to solutions up here for m and n over the integers, then we've got a solution to our original equation over the integers. So let's maybe go ahead and summarize that at the top and then finish it off. So on the last board, we worked our problem down to the following setup. We want to try and solve the equation a squared plus 15 equals 2b squared, where a and b are natural numbers. So let's see maybe how we could do this. I want to make the following observation first, and that is that 15 is the same thing as 3 times 5. So maybe we could work modulo 5 or modulo 3, and then use the fact that only certain numbers are perfect squares, mod 5 or mod 3. So maybe we'll reduce mod 5, and I'll let you guys see if you can find a similar solution reducing mod 3. So again, like I said, reducing mod five, that'll give us a squared is congruent to two b squared modulo five. But now let's look at the perfect squares modulo five. So I'm gonna write that like this. We're gonna have k, k squared, and then two k squared. And all of these calculations are happening mod five. So I only really need to look at the numbers zero, one, two, three and four, because those are all my residues modulo five. So zero squared is obviously zero. Zero squared times two is zero. One squared is one, and then times two is two. Two squared is four, but then two times four is eight, which is three. And then three squared is nine, which is four again, times two is eight, which is three again. I'm doing my reduction mod five at every step. And then finally four squared is 16, which is one mod five times two is two. So we wanna hone in on these second two columns. And notice that in the congruence we're working with, we have a perfect square on the left-hand side and twice a perfect square on the right-hand side. So the question is, when can a perfect square be equal to twice a perfect square? Notice that only happens right here if both of them are congruent to zero mod five. It doesn't happen anywhere else. Okay, so notice that that tells us that A and B are both congruent to zero modulo five. But if A and B are congruent to zero mod five, well that tells us that A squared and B squared are both congruent to zero mod 25. But now if we take our original equation, by our original equation I mean this one right here, and instead of reducing mod five, we reduce mod 25, let's see what we get. So. Like I said, reducing mod 25. So we'll have a squared plus 15. That'll just leave us with 15 on the left-hand side because a squared is zero mod 25. Then we'll have two times b squared, but that's like two times zero mod 25 because of this assumption, or I should say observation. So we have 15 is congruent to zero mod 25 but that is clearly a contradiction. So that means we were not able to solve this equation, but any solution to our original equation would produce a complementary solution to this equation. So that means there must be no solution to our original equation. But that finishes the proof that this thing right here is never a perfect square. And that's a good place to stop.